Hello and welcome to a Dry Bones Ministries special podcast series on the consecration of St. Joseph. My name is Father Adam Potter and today is day 14. We continue our journey by looking at St. Joseph's unique title as being the Savior of the Savior. If it sounds heretical, don't run away just yet. We'll see that this title takes nothing away from Jesus being the Savior of the world in a unique way in a unique and unrepeatable way. And yet we see Joseph plays a monumental role and therefore we can call him the zealous defender of Christ. Okay, if you're ready, let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn to St. Joseph. O Joseph, heavenly hosts, your worthiness proclaim, and Christendom conspires to celebrate your fame. You who in purest bonds were to the virgin bound, how glorious is your name renowned. You, when you did behold your spouse about to bear, were sore oppressed with doubt, were filled with wondering care. At length the angel's word your anxious heart relieved, she by the Spirit had conceived. You, with your newborn Lord, did seek far Egypt's land, as wandering pilgrims you fled o'er the desert sand. That Lord, when lost by you, is in the temple found, while tears are shed and joys abound. Not till death's hour is past do other men obtain, the gain of holiness and glorious rest attain. You, like two angels made and life completely blessed, now clasp your God unto your breast. O Holy Trinity, your suppliant servant spare, grant us to rise to heaven for Joseph's sake and prayer, and so our grateful hearts to you shall ever raise, exalting canticles of praise. Amen. The Prayer to St. Joseph, Patron of Chaste Souls. St. Joseph, Father and Guardian of Virgins, into whose faithful keeping were entrusted innocence itself, Christ Jesus and Mary, the Virgin of Virgins, I pray and beseech thee, through Jesus and Mary, those pledges so dear to thee, to keep me from all uncleanness, and to grant that my mind may be untainted, my heart pure, and my body chaste. Help me always to serve Jesus and Mary in perfect chastity. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, so, as I said, we have this great title for Joseph called the Savior of the Savior. And I remember the first time that I heard it, it, I was taken aback and needed to really find out what is this talking about. It sounds troubling, to say the least. But, but in this very famous story of the slaughter of the innocents, all of a sudden, we start to see something very reasonable about what this is saying. So, the story is this. This is Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 14, where God speaks to Joseph through da, 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 <laughs> a dream. And here they are. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there till I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. So we see there in a very powerful way, God gives Joseph a task. A task that must have been obscure. It's amazing. We'll speak more to this later on. But Joseph's ability to interpret, uh, discern, God speaking to him through a dream. Sometimes it's hard enough, amen, whenever God speaks to us very clearly through other people, through scripture. And yet, here he is getting these dreams. What was that like whenever Joseph woke up and had, like, I have to leave now? Right now in the middle of the night? Did he want to roll over? Did he want to maybe ask a friend before he ran it by Mary? This may have sounded crazy. And yet, no, he knew he needed to act right away and he did. And he did, in his faithful response, offer God an opportunity to work through him in a way that 
we have to wonder what would have happened if Joseph didn't respond. Again, this is speculative because Joseph's will was so perfectly given over to God's will that Jesus was in good hands. Yet, if Joseph wouldn't have responded in faithful obedience, Herod would have come in and he would have slaughtered all of the children two years old and under. And what would have happened to Jesus? What what would have happened to his mission to save the world? We can see in this very real way, God depended on Joseph. He needed Joseph to be faithful. He needed Joseph to be obedient. He needed Joseph to be this protector. We could even say a savior. He saved Jesus from this slaughter. And he saved not just anybody, but the savior of the world. So this is where that title comes from, that Joseph can be called the savior of the world because he saved Jesus from the wicked intentions of Herod by taking him to Egypt. But ultimately, this takes nothing away from Jesus. This is something that Protestants can give Catholics a hard time about. In exalting Joseph as being the savior of the savior, it takes nothing away from God. It actually glorifies God in this way that He's willing to humble himself to use us and depend on us so that he can save the world and ultimately fulfill his mission of why he came. We see this is very scriptural, right? I'm thinking about the way that Paul talks about the corporate reality of grace, of salvation, of the way that God works, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 16. This is also in Romans chapter 12, where God, sorry, Paul talks about the body, about the church, about all of us being so connected to one another that we need one another. And that to say that, Joseph, that God didn't need Joseph, that it would like, nope, it's just God coming down, doing his thing, and he'll just work around us. And it'd be as crazy if, as if the finger were able to say, no, all I need is the brain. I'll, I just need the, the brain directly just to send its synapses, use its synapses to send the impulses to, like, no, that, that finger actually needs the arm and needs the shoulders working through the, the different bicep tendons and everything. And so here's just this very real way that salvation is connected through a body. And it's in his utter humility that God can be glorified. Thank you, Joseph, for your faithfulness. Maybe a good thing to consider is God allows himself to depend on a lot of humble people. A lot of little people. How about you? Have you ever considered how God is depending on you? To work through you in a way that if you are not faithful, if you're not obedient, that there will be consequences. And this isn't meant to be a a threat, but just an invitation to really consider that, that God needs you. And that God can work through you in a way that's unique and unrepeatable with you. Whether that's with your spouse, whether that's with your children, or whether that's with the people that you're connected with. And that we can never underestimate just the small acts of faithfulness that we offer to God. And give him this avenue to come flooding through us and to impact those people around us. Okay, uh, just two more quick points on on this day that I found really powerful. In considering how Joseph was a a savior of the savior, we see something very beautiful about the way that Joseph is used to prepare Jesus for the salvation of the world. And in this, we see how Joseph is used in his relationship with Jesus. So that, okay, he saved Jesus from the slaughter of the innocents, and then Jesus was good. It's like, no, it was more than that. It was actually Joseph's entire life that he was able to in witnessing to him and loving him and serving him, modeling for him, was able to prepare, help prepare Jesus to offer his life as a sacrifice for the world. And here's what's amazing, right? And it's this reality that Joseph wasn't able to be there at the end. Everything that Joseph poured into his son, into the Holy Family, would be in such a way that Joseph would only have to hear about it on the other side of this world in the next and be able to see 
Jesus coming through in this perfect offering to the Father and then coming into limbo to be able to say, the victory is won. The gates of heaven are now open. And so all, the, all those who have lived in death can now come into the righteousness of heaven. What were, the, what were those moments like? What were those moments that Joseph was able to teach Jesus about sacrificial love that's embodied on the cross? What are those ways that Joseph and the ways that he was able to with a persevering heart and embracing the poverty and embracing the simplicity of this loving devotion and faithfulness to the Father, was able to teach Jesus. I've been asked this before by parents, like, how do I teach my kids how to sacrifice? And it's like, it's not about reading a Bible verse or it's not about like do this teaching lesson. It's do it. <laughs> like have in your family an embracing of fasting and sacrificing in a way that in a way that one would live that I don't get everything that I want. That every single day there are opportunities to deny myself, to do something for someone else in a way that is a sacrifice and giving. And that in a beautiful way, the Holy Family lived this. That prepared Jesus to offer himself for the world. Finally, I just wanted to offer this, that in our title of uh, Joseph being the savior of the savior, it's this idea that he was a defender of Christ. That's our petition for our litany of St. Joseph today, that he's a zealous defender of Christ. And we see this, right, throughout his whole life, defending him. And uh, the question that I've uh, been pondering and want to pass on to you is just this consideration of, so how are you and I called to defend Christ. What does that mean for you? Here's some things that it means to me. Thinking about just defending Christ within me, Christ in my soul, right? And how in our world today, with all of its immorality, all of its wickedness, and all of the ways that we have portals through the internet and through TV and media, music, there are all these different ways that the evil one is trying to get in and uproot this relationship that we have with Christ. And something like, even there, just personally, defending Christ means defending anything that might take me or take away from or uproot just my confidence and my connection to Jesus in my, uh, in my everyday life. I'm thinking about this in my family. A lot of people have families that are antithetical to faith, or maybe it's just indifference. <laughs> indifference can be toxic or cynicism can be toxic when it comes to the faith or one's relationship with Christ. And so how are we being called to defend that and saying, no, it's real. <laughs> this relationship is real and it's everything. And how dare you talk about that that way? Um, and maybe this could be more public outside of family. It could be friends. It could be school. It could be work or just wherever. Um, Christ, Christ calls us to defend them. And He's a big God, you know, in a sense, like he doesn't need us to defend him. And yet we see that he also can use us in the ways that we can allow ourselves to be vulnerable and stepping forward and saying, no, he's real. He's changed my life. Let me tell you about him in a way that, okay, maybe we're going to get shot down, but maybe to be able to witness a willingness to be shot down can be seen by somebody else. Courage begets courage. And right now in our world, Oh, we need the witness of courage, of being able to take a stand. And it's amazing the ripple effects that that can take. So, oh gosh, there's a lot there. Let's, let's pray for each other. That this rela- reality of our relationship with Jesus Christ can just be something that we treasure and protect at all costs. And in, in that just really be a vehicle for God to work through us to other people. With that said, let's pray. We'll turn to our Lord and praying the Litany of St. Joseph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, 
pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the virgin, pray for us. Foster father of the son of God, pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the holy family, pray for us. Joseph most just, pray for us. Joseph most chaste, pray for us. Joseph most prudent, pray for us. Joseph most courageous, pray for us. Joseph most obedient, pray for us. Joseph most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of, of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and Prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Through the intercession of St. Joseph, our blessed mother Mary, may almighty God bless, keep, and protect each and every one of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I don't know if you realize this, but we have just completed day 14, which is the end of our second week. And gosh, congratulations. It, we're doing it. We're going through. And it's just, it's been an amazing journey. And I, I've just been so grateful for this opportunity to connect with you. And hopefully it's been up, uplifting and beneficial to you. And just this reality we're not alone, that's for sure. And to be able to be connected and be pursuing this greater knowledge and love of the Lord through Joseph, it's this beautiful thing. So that at the very end of this, ah, we can celebrate with the glorious feast of St. Joseph and to celebrate all the work that he's doing in our lives. So let's keep each other in prayer. God bless you. And St. Joseph, pray for us. <laughs>